Okay, the last segment of our tutorial for doing your Mega Lab. Uh, so this tutorial, we're just going to learn how to beautify uh, your tree and put some pictures of the animals on it, and how to look up genes of your own choosing. So um, to do this part, where you just want to take a picture of your phylogenetic tree, we're going to stick it into a PowerPoint slide, and that way we can manipulate it further. So if you're using Windows, um, if you just hit a Shift Print Screen, it'll take a screenshot of this. So on a Mac, it's really easy to take a screenshot. You just hit a Shift Command and Four, and then you get this little thing pops up, and uh, you can hit the space bar, and that will take a picture of the entire screen. And then you go and find that on um, on your desktop, and you'll see it there. So let's open up PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to go in a Mac, I'm going to go to Applications. If this was in Windows, I would just go to Microsoft Office and find my PowerPoint icon. But PowerPoint is really nice to call up um, because it's easy to manipulate screenshots that you put in there. So I'm going to open up a blank presentation of PowerPoint here. Um, I'm going to blow it up here. And uh, if you go to New Slide and Blank, it just gets rid of those other lines. You can then delete out that guy. So now I want to insert my picture of my screenshot. So I'm going to go to Insert, uh, Pictures from File, and I'm going to find on my desktop the screenshot I just took. I'm going to find that file, Insert, and lo and behold, it's here. And now what I can do is crop it and then blow it up. So if you double click on, um, on the picture, um, up here you'll see a little icon that says crop so hit crop and now you just put your cursor over these little black lines cut that baby down to size so you can cut it like this and like that um, and then click off and so now it's the right size now if you click it and go to the corner you can make it big you want to leave some room on the side because we're going to be adding pictures here so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this thing larger so that you can see it more easily um, and so now what we can do is we're going to go on to Google, if you haven't already, Google Images, and take, download pictures of each of these species so we can put them on either side here. Uh, before, actually, before we do that, you can even change the background, like you could go to Design and um, go to Format Background, a Solid Feel, and um, then just uh, pick your color, whatever color you want, something like black is cute. Um, and then go ahead, and maybe this guy's too small, too big, so I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. Um, call up uh, Google. So I'm going to go to google.com and start typing in the names of your people, of your animals. So I'm going to type in my orca and call up a nice picture of him on Google Images. So I'm just going to save this image here. Um, and I'm going to give them a name. That's fine. Save to desktop. So same thing now. I can come in here, go to insert, picture from file, and find my orca. I'm going to go down here and find the picture of my orca. There he is. And of course he looks huge here, so I can make him smaller by grabbing the corner. And once I get him to a certain size I like, I can do fancy things like if you double click on him, uh, you'll get all these artistic effects you can do. Um, if I were to blow my PowerPoint up a little bit bigger, um, then I'll actually be able to um, turn him into something cool like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put him down where he is. Make him a little bit larger. How cool is that? Okay, um, and then... Um, going back down the size, I'm going to go back and find my next critter here. Um, you know, you want to probably want to type in the species names. So I had one called Calithrix um, Jockus. So I'm going to find a picture of a Calithrix Jockus. Look how cute he is. And I'm just going to double click on him. Um, you can actually copy the image. You don't even have to save it. If you copied it, then... Um, then you can just go in here and uh, paste and get him down to size, double click on him, and now you can uh, do some pretty styles with him. So um, I have to blow it up to be able to do that. 
So I'm just going to click on that one and then put him next to where he is. And there he is. So um, I think you get the idea. I'm going to finish mine and I will be back in a second to show you the final product. Yay. Okay. Here's my little presentation here. So I've completed my artwork here. Um, let me just show you the whole thing. I'll come up to a uh, slideshow and click the current slide. And so um, let me make this bigger. So ta-da! There you go. So there's my whole thing. And actually, uh, you can see on the bottom here, I've labeled it uh, with the breast cancer gene name. Um, so anyway, that is how you do mega. And that's how you create a phylogenetic tree in of your particular gene so you can track the evolution of your gene you just did molecular evolutionary biology research yay put that on your resume all right so uh, now real quickly i'm going to show you how to look up a gene of your own if once you've mastered that finally i'm going to show you real quickly how to find a gene of your own to try to do a phylogenetic tree and mega with um, so you're all familiar with google um, but you may not be familiar with something called scholar.google.com. That's a branch of Google that is specific to scientific peer-reviewed journal articles. So again, the website up here is scholar.google.com. And uh, if you go to this website, uh, first thing you'll want to do is click off where it says include patents. We don't need those. We just want it to say articles. And now what you're going to do is pick something you're interested in that has a genetic basis and has been worked on by genetics labs. So for example, maybe you're interested in the gene that causes Tay-Sachs disease, um, in which case I could put Tay-Sachs, that's the name of the disease, gene, and hit return. And you'll see uh, references to peer-reviewed scientific journal articles that have studied um, the Tay-Sachs disease. And now what we want to do is find the little acronym code for that gene. So, for example, in breast cancer, it was BRCA2. Uh, we want to find what it's called in Tay-Sachs. And you may have to hunt for a little bit. You're looking for a something that would have um, just a few letters to it. So here you can say the disease is caused by mutations in the hexagene. Ha-ha! Hexagene. So H-E-X-A would be um, a good start for a name of a gene for Tay-Sachs. And so all I do is, you know, open up Mega, Query Databanks, Nucleotide in the NCBI database, and I type in Homo sapiens, and then capital H, capital E, capital X, capital A. So that's just one example, but happy hunting. Um, you might want to Google genetic disorders so you can get some ideas of which ones you might be interested in studying. Uh, maybe you're interested in a, something completely different that's not even a disease. So it might take some hunting, but good luck. And I look forward to seeing your finished trees, both for the BRCA2 practice gene and for the gene of your choosing. I can't wait to see you uploading those on our Blackboard website. Take care.